Hello and welcome to another week of Division Two Baseball Recap. Here we are, Robert Fry with my man Will Connerly. We're going to cover some great Division Two Baseball this past week. We have some shakeups in the top 25 as we have a little bit of a, a new number two in Central Missouri. Um, Barton enters the top 10 at number nine. We have a couple teams in the top 15 with Ashland, Catawba, amongst others, but really excited to talk about that. And we have Mount Olive going from 20 to 12 after their sweep of UNC Pembroke. We also have West Texas A&M jumping up six spots to 16. We have Georgia Southwestern jumping up from 25 to 19. Lee's entering the top 25 at 21. Colorado Mesa, we'll talk about them later. They're entering the top 25 at 23. And then we have a couple teams receiving votes as well, like Lander, Regis, U Indy entering those receiving votes area category. But without further ado, we'll get started and we'll again go conference by conference, cover the past weekend and, and give tell you all about it. So we'll start in the CACC post. They started off two and one. They're ten and fourteen on the year, two and one in the CACC North. They started off conference play as the on the right talon, as their nicknames the Eagles. They took a series against Felician two games to one. The two wins were led by starting pitching. Matt Salmon went seven with six hits, one run in four Ks, and Joe Cristiano also went seven, six hits, one run in seven Ks. Both performed well in their starts to win the series. Jimmy Brennan had six hits in the last eleven of bats last last week. You know, he has a 10-game hit streak now. He's looking to bounce back, you know, from his previous two years. We haven't really talked about him a lot. Brennan was hitting 372 two years ago, 370 last year at 291 now, but he's looking to bounce back after his 10-game hit streak. Felician, they played five games this past week. They lost the aforementioned series to post, but then swept a double Sunday doubleheader against Wilmington, Delaware. In that first game of the doubleheader, Jordan Savignon, Improved to 2-0 and after a seven-inning, four-hit, one-earned run, two-strikeout game, and he did not. And Logan Waltz out of the bullpen has been dealing. He's thrown five and a third total innings this past week and did not allow an earned run, in fact. And matter of fact, Waltz has not allowed an earned run in his last eight appearances since getting moved to the bullpen in 17 and a third innings. Caldwell at 4-9, 3-2 in the north. They went 3-2, and two, take a series against Bridgeport and split a Sunday doubleheader with Holy Family. Michael Cruz hit well this week. He tallied seven hits with two home runs and five RBI. Cruz leads the team with a 354 average. Bridgeport went two and three this past week in conference play, dropping a series to Caldwell and split a doubleheader with Chestnut Hill. Justin Nyaratti collected his third win in the season. He's 3-0 and after going six innings of three-run ball with nine strikeouts. He leads the team with a 3-9 ERA, 30 strikeouts in 30 innings. Bloomfield, they still have yet to play. They had their season opener pushback. They'll start this week on Tuesday. Dominican, 6-16, six, six and 1-1 one, one North. They played three of their five scheduled games this week, going 1-2. and two. They are going to play Bloomsfield now on Thursday instead of Saturday. Holy Family had a great week to start their first ever conference games, going 4-1 and one against Chestnut Hill and Caldwell. Their first ever CAACC win was behind a walk-off hit by pitch. All Brian Comer does for his offense is hit and steal bases. He had six hits and three stolen bases on the week. He leads a team with a 364 average. He's hit safely in 11 of his last 12 and stolen bases with 17. Casey Murphy has provided length in the rotation for Holy Family, according to his third consecutive start of seven innings and his fourth start of exactly eight strikeouts to go four and one on the year. He has a 195 ERA in 32 and a third. Goldie Beacom. They took two or three against Jefferson starting conference play. They're 16 and nine on the season. And their doubleheader sweep on Friday, first baseman Garrett Musi homered in his fourth and fifth straight game, which made him the school's all time career home run leader with 28. He also carries a 10 game hit streak with his gaudy 460 average. One of the top hitters in the East region. In the final game of the series, Nate Miller went six scoreless with six strikeouts to go three and one. Miller now carries a 109 ERA and a 1.14 whip. In 24 and two-thirds innings, seven appearances, four starts. Jefferson, they lost a series goalie beak on the split, a doubleheader with Dominican. Gabe Silva went to 3-0 and after his five-inning start, where he allowed one run and struck out three against Goldie Beacom. Chestnut Hill went 1-4 to start conference play. 
Their lone win was behind the arm of Brendan Long, who went five and two-thirds with five hits, one earned run, no walks, and six strikeouts. Wilmington, they lost both their conference opening game, but they did win a big midweek game against then number two ranked Millersville by 10 runs. And that, Will, is all about the CACC. Yeah, the most impressive team to me is, like you mentioned, the most impressive player in this region, Garrett Musi. I mean, really right now, he's putting himself in all American considerations 100%. Due to seven bombs and eight doubles and a pair of triples, a lot of extra base hits, slugging 984, Robert. Man, this is definitely the most impressive team in this league right now, and they've got a great player. However, how about a holy family, you know, starting off strong, like you mentioned as well, in CACC play as we continue here on our breakdowns, and we'll go to the CCAA, Robert. Cal State San Marcos takes sole possession of first place in the CCAA. They take three of four against number 19, Monterey Bay. Phoenix Samay, he recorded a multi-hit game in each game of this series. He went 11 of 19 in total, and he's now recorded a hit in 16 consecutive games. His average is up to 394 on the year. Garrett Tennyson went 8 of 15 in the series as he recorded at least a hit or RBI in 17 consecutive games for him. So very impressive right there for what they're able to do. And when we look at the San Marcos team, he's a guy in Tennyson who is hitting 420 on the season. Luke Reese hit a walk-off home run in game one of this series. He's reached base safely in 18 of his last 20. So they have a handful of guys right now playing really well for San Marcos. They're 15 and five, and that's good for first place in the league. Chico State, they traveled to Cal State LA, and they won the series on the road three games to one. Daniel Vieira started in the only wins, but was on a tear in those three games, going 8 of 13 with four home runs and nine RBI. He's second on the team in home runs with five. Kevin Lyons threw the ball effectively. He went seven of shutout ball with five Ks. His ERA dropped to a team best 3.57 as he's gone 35 and a third this season. Cal Poly Pomona, they were off this week. They will host San Fran State this upcoming week. And then Stanage Law State, they're 11, 15, and 1, 7, and 11 right now in conference play. And they were at home this weekend. They clinched a series against Cal State East Bay going 3 and 1. They got a walk off by Mac Cabarro in the final game of the series for, to clinch it. And Chris Catalano, currently second in the conference with a 423 average, he. Went 7 of 17 on the weekend with a pair of RBIs, scored four runs, and then Caleb Bernoncini excelled in his first start of the year in game three of the series. Going five and a third, four hits, one run, two walks, eight Ks, and the junior now has a sub two, a 199 ERA in 22 and two thirds. And then Cal State San Bernardino, they're 7-11 and 11 in conference play. Cal State Dominguez Hills, they were going up against each other. They split a series at Toro Field in Carson where CSUSB won the first two games. And while well, Dominguez Hills came back and won the final two games of this series, the Toros were able to get some length from their starting pitching this weekend. Oz, all four starters went at least six innings and gave up four or less. Noah Carliner added two home runs for Dominguez Hills as he's amongst the nation's leaders with a dozen and has hit safely in 17 of his last 18 games. As for the Oats, it's Giovanni Del Negro. He recorded a hit in each game of the series and raised his average to 309 on this season, so heating up a little bit after a slower start. Sonoma State. 12 and 13, 6 and 9 in conference play. They took two of three against San Fran State, with the fourth game being suspended due to darkness. San Fran State had a 9 to 6 lead in the sixth inning of that one. So that's a little bit of your breakdown for the CCAA. And yeah, like you mentioned, well, the Cal State San Marcos, that was 
in the Monterey Bay series was one of our series to watch. Mm -hmm. We selected that and man, that San Marcos offense is really exciting to watch. But speaking of really exciting to watch and something we watch every week is the conference Carolinas. And well, we're going to talk a little bit about within the conference Carolinas. We're going to start with Mount Olive. Mount Olive decided, Hey, you know, you should be talking about us now. They, like we mentioned at the top, they jumped up to 12 in our rankings. They're 28, 20 and 8, 11 and 3 in conference play. And, well, they went 4 and 0 against all ranked teams. They beat Catawba in a midweek game and they swept then number 10, UNC Pembroke, in a three game set. And, well, one of those games was highlighted by none other than Ethan Mbimbo, who threw the second no hitter in UMO history. Since 2011, he went a seven-inning complete game with six strikeouts. And, well, another thing is in game one of the series, Mount Olive rallied for five runs in the bottom line to win 9-8, including the last three appearances, ending in a hit-by-pitch. So how about that? Back-to-back-to-back hit-by-pitches to win a game. Landon Showboy went 6-for-12 on the week with a home run and six driven in. And he's now hitting 388 and leads the team with six or excuse me, 26 RBI. Young Harris, not still at number five. They have now reached a season high 10 game win streak after their 4 0 road week against Carson Newman. They beat him in a midweek and swept Francis Marion. Zach Murray improved to 5 0 after throwing seven shutout innings with six strikeouts in the start, and his ERA is at a glistening 206. Cade Smallwood, a freshman, was able to get some opportunities this week. He had 19 season at-bats going into the week. He went 6-for-13 with two home runs and six driven in. Ethan Stamps had four hits on the week. He's hit safely in 11 of his last 12. North Greenville in a big series against Barton. They took 2 of 3 against the ninth-ranked team Barton, a team that prior to the series only lost one game at home in a pivotal matchup. NGU only gave up six runs total on the weekend to a team that is top 10 in the nation in hitting offensively so give a lot of credit to the credit to the crusader bullpen brent stukes who went three innings dawson sailor who went an inning and nate roof who went three innings all three of them combined to not give up a single run in their relief appearances landon shaw recorded four hits all doubles in the series as he's nearing the 300 mark at 297 thomas powell also recorded four hits but hey the road does not get any easier for north greenville as now they host the aforementioned number five young harris this upcoming weekend. Belmont Abbey, they had a solid 3-1 week in which all three wins came from scoring a dozen or more runs. Connor Tucker recorded six hits on the weekend and has hit safely in 15 of his last 16 games. He's second in the conference, hitting at 451. Erskine, they were winners of six in a row after a series sweep of Chowan, but Dale Francis Jr. did have a week. Uh, 2023 conference play of the year is looking to repeat. He went 12 for 22 with two doubles, four home runs, and 14 RBI. He's now hitting 415 with 12 home run and 44 RBI. Freshman Alex Hynt struck out 12 and allowed just two hits and a run in his inning win. He's 5 and 2 with a 3.95 ERA, ERA to go with a top five in Division II, 61 strikeouts over 41 innings. King, they won a series at Southern Wesleyan in conference play. Michael Stars had a good week going 7 for 17 with a couple of runs, putting himself first on the team with a 323 batting average. Mitchell Kallenberg threw three scoreless innings across three appearances on the week. He's been a key contributor out of this tornado bullpen with a 2.87 ERA and a 185 batting average against in 15 and two-thirds innings this season. And that is a little bit of a wrap-up on the Conference Carolinas. Yeah, I mean, I know we we always highlight this league at the top, right? This league at the top with with seven teams above 500, with seven teams in the 20 win vicinity already. Uh, but when you want to talk about a young Harris team and how well they've played and riding a 10 game win streak and say, hey, you're going to go have to play at the tough one of the toughest places to play. I mean, that's just a statistic over the last couple of years. The toughest place to play in the country has been North Greenville. And that's where young Harris is going to go this weekend. All lies should be on that. And here's another thing to look at, Robert. Now, nothing's easy in Conference Carolinas. 
Uh, but when you look at Mount Olive's next couple weekends, they've got some opportunities here playing Chowin and Southern Wesleyan in their next two weekends. Those are the two teams that are currently at last and second to last in the league for a team right now that's in second. You could see Mount Olive put together a couple of sweeps and see them atop this league in a couple of weeks, but that is a primetime battle, a top 10 battle between Young Harris and North Greenville. I cannot wait for it. That is going to be quite a bit of fun. As we continue things here, Robert, you just broke down Conference Carolinas. We're going to break down the East Coast Conference now and talk about a Mercy team that went 4-1 and on the week, taking 3-4 of four against Against Staten Island to start conference play and a midweek game they got against Dominican. Ryan Rosinski went five shutout to go two and one, striking out eight. Zach Ashline had eight hits this week with two home runs and he drove in four. He has nine bombs in 24 games this season, hitting 318 for Mercy. Queens, they're 12 and eight. Three and one as well in conference play. They went four and one with a series win over Lincoln and a midweek win over Caldwell. Your six Jimenez is over 400 on the year with four home runs, hitting 25 RBIs already this season. He's impressed going nine of 19 this week. He had a bomb and six driven in. Malloy, 16 and seven, two and two in conference play in Duville. They're two and two. They split a four game series and it's Alex Dizaman who had five hits and reached base in every game for the series for Duville extending his streak to 11 games consecutively that he's reached base. He also threw a scoreless inning. Anthony Mancero, he also was a bright spot for Malloy going nine of 19, had a bomb, seven driven in, three stolen bases as well. Mancero is hitting 500 on the year in 46 at that. St. Thomas Aquinas, they dropped a series to East Stroudsburg as they stepped out of conference play, or at least did not step into conference action. You had to play a conference game, and they got swept by East Stroudsburg. They will start conference play against Malloy this weekend. And yeah, well, that that's a lot on the ECC. Seven teams, six can only play on a given weekend, so... Good to see that East Coast Conference start conference play. But speaking of conference play and, and something that you've highlighted to me over the past weekend and what's fire, fired you up is the Great American mm-hmm. Conference. Yeah. And we got to talk about it because four teams are tied for first place. Three others are tied for second place. And yet Oklahoma Baptist is 10-8 and eight and they're the eighth place team. You know, all the top eight teams are within two games in this conference. As we got to talk about Oklahoma Baptist, they swept Southern Arkansas and had a massive week overall. They beat receiving vote Pitt State in the midweek, then swept ranked Southern Arkansas. And wow, just impressive 4 0 for the Bison. It's the second time Southern Arkansas has been a s- swept in the Great Americans Conference Series since joining the league in 2012 it's the first time since 2016 that oklahoma baptist has taken a series from southern arkansas as well nolan fiesel went six innings and struck out four allowed just two earned runs for another solid outing he's now six and two through eight starts with a three eight three era and has three or few fewer earned run and five plus innings in each of his last six starts jacob campbell had two home runs last week and has seven on the year he had seven hits last week across five games for the bison They've won five of their last six. He drove in five runs last week with a double as well, along with the two home runs since hitting 330 on the season. They're hitting 319 as a team, which leads the league, and they've hit a GAC most 45 home runs this season. Their staff also has 12 saves, which is the most in the league, showing the ability to win close games as they did this weekend. Washita Baptist, they swept Southeastern Oklahoma State and now have won four in a row. They play Southern Arkansas this weekend in a battle of two of the four teams tied for first place in the GAC. They've thrown the ball well this year, being the only team with a sub four ERA in the league. G. Allen went five for 13 with six RBI during the sweep. He had a home run in every game of the series and had two doubles in game one of the series. He's hitting 339 on the year, 
with seven home runs after one in each game this weekend. In 17 conference games, Allen has 14 extra base hits, 16 RBI, which is absolutely impressive for just conference play. Harding took two or three from Northwestern Oklahoma State. They lost the finale five to four. They're tied with, again, Southern Arkansas, Washita, and Arkansas Monticello for first place, all being 12 and six. Sebastian Martinez has hit safely in eight of his nine games and is on a 16 hit streak. He's hitting 321 on the year. Michael DeWald is leading the team, hitting 358. Davis Welch is an arm you need to keep an eye on. The 6 1 seniors allowed three or fewer earned runs in all eight starts of the season, working at least into the fifth in every outing. He's 4 and 2 with a 2 1 6. And rotation counterpart Maddox Long is 3 and 1 with a 2 6 6 through eight starts as well. Arkansas Tech swept Southern. Southwestern Oklahoma State and now in second place. They allowed only six runs over the weekend. The staff has a 4-1 ERA, which is second in the league. And opponents are hitting just 242 off tech arms, which is also second best in the league overall. In 17 conference games, Arkansas Tech has a 239 ERA, which is best in the league by far, with opponents just hitting 203 off their staff. One double, or excuse me, one home run, two double. And five hits last week for Logan Schwenke, who leads the team hitting with 368 and a 1233 OPS on the season. Grant Shahan has thrown 22 and a third innings in six GAC games out of the pen with a .81 ERA. John Gray has a .1.67 ERA through six starts. Southern Nazarene, they took two or three against Arkansas Monticello. Monticello is tied for first place, but tough dropping that series in a series that they should win. In one of three series, Southern Nazarene took the first two games, including a 98 win game in game two before Monticello salvaged the series with an 18 to three win in the finale. Henderson State took two or three against East Central, losing the series finale 8 7, nearly getting the sweep. They're in a three way tie for second place. Mitchell Segigal went six to nine in two games, played at East Central, which with three RBI and one walk. He's 12 of 26 through eight GAC games so far and has a 372 overall average on the year through 14 games. And that, Will, is quite a bit on the GAC. It is. It definitely is. And, uh,. I am, man, it's hard to even say where to start, right? I mean, Harding, Southern Arkansas, Wachita, Monticello, all tied for first, Northwestern, Oklahoma State, Arkansas Tech, Henderson State, all second, and then you got Oklahoma Baptist, who just looked like the best team, taking it from Southern Arkansas. This is a really, really, really fun league. Um, I- I'm excited to see what's going to continue to happen uh, with this because it's all tied at the top. With that being said, we'll continue to talk about another league. That's the GLIAC. Wayne State went 4-0 over the weekend versus Davenport and Purdue Northwest. They look like a really good team right now. They start GLIAC playoff strong. Bennett Hitzelberger got a lot of hits. He went 7-14 with five runs scored, one double, six runs driven in. A couple walks didn't strike out, and while he stole the base as well, the sophomore earned his second GLIAC player of the Week honor for him, the second time the sophomore has been able to garner that attention and recognition here this year. He leads the conference in doubles while hitting 413 on the year. This is a Wayne State team now that is going to be in the national spotlight, we feel like, rather quickly, and they're making their way. They have been there this year, and they certainly could get themselves right back there, at least from all rise, inside our top 25 fairly soon if they continue to look like this. I mean, this is a Wayne State team that, okay, they have Carter Fitzpatrick this weekend. He was filthy per usual. Seven shutout for him, 10 Ks. Um, I mean, and then you got reigning D2BI national pitcher, of the week and Griffin Kylander. Well, he went seven, allowing just one run. And if that's not good for you, Seth Morano also went seven innings and also allowed one run. So that's three starters in this rotation who absolutely shoved those three went a combined 21 innings and just two earned from them. That's pretty darn good. So Wayne state has a good week to start off. Gleag play grand Valley goes three and one as well. A strong rebound after being swept at Seton Hill last week, they were able to sweep Parkside. They split with Saginaw on Sunday. GVSU, a three and one start. Brendan Gucciardo wins seven of 12 in three games over the weekend with a double and one triple. Owen Avery and Nick Ratowski each went five innings, allowing one earned while picking up the win for the Lakers this 
weekend. Now we'll talk about another 3-1 and team in GLIAC action, and that is going to be Saginaw Valley State, a team that's been interesting to look at this year, a team that scored 41 runs on a Monday doubleheader, a sweep of Parkside, and they also split against Grand Valley, as we just mentioned, on Sunday. And their 27-run, 25-hit outburst, it was Hayden Yachek who went 3-5 of five with 4 RBI, scored a couple runs with a double, and he also went 2-3 of three in Game 1 of that series on Monday with a great day at the plate. It's just been a great year for him at the plate. Also in Game 1 of the series, he went five innings and allowed two earned, picking up the win. So now he's 3-0 and on the mound. Here's some numbers for you. He's hitting 480 on the year with four home runs and 27 RBIs. Plus, he scored 32 runs in 20 games this year, while he's also 3-0 and on the hill with a 1-2-9 ERA through 21 innings across three starts. So he has been, he's looked like a Cy Young on the hill, and he's looked like an All-American at the plate. I mean, this is coming all after not playing at all last year. Dude is an absolute beast right now. Davenport went 2-2 two and two this weekend, sweeping Purdue Northwest on Friday. Then they were swept, as we mentioned, against Wayne State on Saturday. Chase Kemp helped the Panthers start 2-2 two and two in Gliak play. He went 5-12, of 12, scored a run, had a double and an RBI in four games over the weekend. And then Carson Fisher, I mean, he tossed a complete game, allowing no runs, 13 Ks for him, no walks. Jared Birkenposs also went a CG, just one unearned run, and only allowed four hits during the outing. So a couple of good starts from some Davenport arms, and that is our GLIAC breakdown. Yeah, and we're excited with the GLIAC, but we're also excited with the GLVC, and we'll just get right into the GLVC is – you know, we, we got to talk about a UND team. Of course, we have to talk about a UND team first. You know, they've won 14 in a row, and they're 12-0 and 0 in GLVC play after sweeping Southwest Baptist. How about Easton Good, 12-game hit streak? He went 9 of 20 with nine runs scored in, f- in five games last week with four extra base hits. That's the second consecutive week he's had the most impressive individual effort at the plate in our eyes. He's hitting 438 with a 1453 OPS through 12 GLVC games. And he's driven in 12 runs in a dozen conference games as well. Out of the pen, it's Andrew DeWitt, who went five and a third, didn't allow a run, a walk, and just one hit with seven Ks to move 3-0 and on a season in game one of the series. Jackson Kirkpatrick struck out 13 batters in four and two-thirds and did not allow an earn run, but did walk five in the series finale. Carter Nowak went seven innings with an earned run and 10 Ks for the Hounds in game two of the series. How about EJ White leading the Greyhounds in appearances, 11 saves, five, and ERA 1.15. He has six scoreless appearances just thus far in GLBC play. Maryville, they have Andy Bunton in their ranking. They're receiving votes, and yours truly was able to check out one of the games on Saturday this weekend in which Maryville won eight to three Gould and Elise Ste- Michael Gould and Elise Stevens each homered. And he's but we're talking about Andy Bunt. He's hitting four fifty eight on the season with six doubles and he's nineteen of thirty eight in twelve GLVC games thus far. He went nine of thirteen over the weekend with five runs scored, two doubles and two RBI. Maryville is ten and two in GLVC action after dropping that opener three to two on a walk off to Lewis. But then they won three straight to secure the series, including the one that I mentioned earlier, eight to three. They host a hot Umsel team at home this weekend, and Maryville is twelve and three at home. Jury got a sweep over Upper Iowa. Tyler Bestunas eight of fifteen. Max Elmer nine of twenty, and Luke Burke seven of twenty-one. All have productive weeks for the Panthers. Jury is now nine and three in GLVC action and hosts Quincy this weekend. Cody Ball improved to four and one after six innings with nine strikeouts. He's posted a 222 ERA and 0.94 whip through seven outings, six starts with two complete games across 44 and two thirds innings. Missouri S and T they took three or four against Jewel behind some big offensive performances. They scored 19 runs in the series opener, scored 14 in the series finale. Sam Monroe went eight of 12 with nine runs, five. RBI and four walks as he got the GLVC hitter of the week. And then on the flip side, the GLVC pitcher of the week was Eston McBroom. He threw a complete game shutout, allowing just four hits and five strikeouts and a win over Jewel in game three of the series. Quincy and Rocker split. Griffin Kern went six 
and struck out 15 and allowed an earned run. He has 41 strikeouts, eight walks on the year, and 33 and a third. Dustin Dubon has hit safely in 11 straight, and he went 7 and 15 over the weekend with three doubles and has hit seven in his last eight games. He drove in nine over the weekend. Austin Simpson is still on a tear. He went 11 of 19. McKendry, they split in UIS. In the games UIS won, they had got great pitching efforts from Gavin Walbring. Seven innings, four hits, no one runs, 10K, one walk. And Riley Morgan, seven innings, one hit, seven Ks, no walks, one earned run. Game three of the series, which was 11-1 win. However, the Bearcats took games two and four to get a split. The win in game two was the first for McKendry versus UIS since 2016. They snapped a 20-game win streak for UIS against McKendry. And shout out to Max Bennett, the McKendry SID, for that bit of information. Um, so we talked about them a little bit earlier. They, they're they hot. They had a four-game sweep over Truman State. The Tritons have won seven games in a row and eight of their last nine overall. Garrett Brunstetter allowed just one run in seven innings, struck out season-high 10 batters in the season finale. They play Crosstown rival Maryville this weekend. Hey, Great Lakes Valley Conference, man. It looks like it's uh, Maryville and Indy right now. That's what it kind of looks like for me. Um you know, you got to talk about a UND team. We talked about it last week. They are probably going to sweep Southwest Baptist. They did. Um, and, and now they've got a battle against Rockhurst at home. You like their chances, perhaps 16-0. and Rockhurst, I think, might be able to get a game. We'll see. That should be fun. And then a Maryville team, man, against a hot Umso team. That'll be fun, too. So looking forward to continuing to follow that league as we follow things in the GMAC now, Robert. Let's talk about the GMAC, and let's talk about a con- – I mean, here's a team that we definitely have not talked about, Robert, at all. And, I mean, we're going to talk about them now. What about a Kentucky Wesleyan team? You know, you know, like at the end of the day, when we're looking at the standings right now, Kentucky Wesleyan and Finley, they're both in first place at seven and one. So Kentucky Wesleyan, they take three of four against the Northwood team. And we're definitely going to be mentioning them. They're also Walsh. They take three of four at Thomas Moore. They're now in third place in the league at seven and two. So, when you look at the G Dash Mac right now, you've got Finley at seven and one, Kentucky Wesleyan. Mind you, they're a team that's eight and sixteen overall, Robert. So we haven't been talking about them for good reason. Seven of their eight wins, though, have come now in conference play, and they're a seven and one start. So they're tied with Finley for a first, Walsh is second, and then Ashland quote unquote is fourth, but they're three and one. So right there in the loss column in first place as well. But Walsh, they do some good work. Mason Stolt had seven hits in the four game series for the Cavaliers with four RBI and a one home run. He's hitting 357 on the season. And then Ashland, as mentioned, a team we talk about a lot, a team in our national rankings, got a lot of good pieces. Um, and we expected this with all the guys they have brought back three of four against Lake Erie to begin conference play. It was the Cam Miller show this weekend nine of 18 four runs scored four rbi two double three stolen bases he had a walk-off rbi double in game one of the series with the storm that led au to a four to three victory marshall leishman well he's been great again seven innings one earned eight k's in that first game for another fantastic outing he's now three and oh on the season with a two three five era hillsdale well, they win three or four at home against a Tiffin team to take the series after dropping the opener seven to nothing. They win five to four in eight innings in game two on a walk off in a hard fought series win. Ohio Dominican lost two of three hosting Coker as they stepped outside of conference action. Jordan Daniels, well, he hit 500, seven to 14 over the week at the plate for ODU. And how about a Finley team? I mean, we, we, you, you, when you talk about first place teams, we already talked about Kentucky Wesleyan. You have to start it with a how about a, and I think a how about a is definitely how we're going to describe what Finley did this week. And they complete the sweep against Cedarville with the final game being a 34 run. Yes. 34 run outburst, a program record for them. Andrew Michael, he was a key contributor 
this weekend. Two plus hits in each game of the series, as you noted on DIVII's Twitter, Robert. And in total, Michael went nine of 13 with four RBI during that series. He's now hitting 400 on the year. Logan Bragg also has something to brag about right now. A nine inning complete game shutout for him. That's pretty good. Eight Ks, two walks, while the Southpaw just surrendered three hits. And Finley and Kentucky Wesley, and well, those two tango on the top of the GMAC right now. Trevac they take three or four at home against Malone. Caleb Marks, well, he's putting a mark on it right now, looking like one of the best pitchers in the league. His second consecutive 11 punchy start. 11 punchy start while not allowing a run as well as he went eight shutout and was impressive in their five to nothing win to begin the series. So 14 innings, no runs, and 22 Ks for him in his last two starts. And that is is our breakdown of the G-Mac. Man, I tell you what, well, we got fired up over at Kentucky Wesleyan and Finley tied at 7-1 and one at the top, you know, we, and we haven't really mentioned it. Now we're here mentioning it, you know, <laughs> this is, we had, gave a lot of love to Ashland, but, you know, you got to talk about a, what, a Kentucky Wesleyan and a Finley team because they're at the top right now and be really excited to see how this plays out. You know, a lot of expectations were, Ashland in the preseason, Northwood got some expectations, but Kentucky Wesleyan said, we don't care about that. We're going to beat you. And now they're seven and one. And we're really excited to see how the rest of this G dash Mac plays out. So speaking of now going from the G Mac to the G NAC, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about the number 10 team in the country now, according to our poll. And we're going to talk about Northwest Nazarene as they hosted St. Martin's in a four-game set and took three of four. Trevor Tishanko delivered quite a bit at the plate. He went 6-13 of 13 with three home runs and nine driven. And he's hit safely in 12 of his last 13 and leads the team in hitting at 318. The Nighthawks will travel to play second-place team Central Washington this upcoming weekend. Dylan McLaughlin for St. Martin's, he had five hits and five RBI over the weekend. He leads the team at in hitting at 3.33. Justin, Justice Yamashita threw a complete game to improve to 3-3 three and three in the in St. Martin's or in the Saints' lone win, striking out six. He has a 2.80 ERA now in 45 innings for Yamashita. Central Washington, now 8-4 in conference play, 13-13 13 13 overall. They split a four-game road series with Montana State Billings, who's now 10-20 and 4-8. Central Washington senior Austin Olin had himself a weekend going 9 of 18 with two home runs and seven RBI, including a 6 for 6 game in game three of the series. Olin leads the conference hitting at 398. The Wildcats, like I mentioned, they will take on Northwest Nazarene in a battle for first place this upcoming weekend. Montana State Billings, Cy Miller earned his first win of the season and, and earned the series split by throwing a seven inning complete game with seven hits. One run, two walks, and five strikeouts. Lastly, Western Oregon. They didn't play a weekend series. They were off, but they did, however, play a midweek contest against George Fox. They won 8-5. to five. Current Mitchell recorded two hits in that game. He's hit safely in nine of his last 12, and they will take on MSU Billings at home this weekend. As that is a wrap-up on the shortest of Division II conferences, which is the GNAC, just five teams. And now we'll talk about a conference that has, well, a lot to talk about. And I think a team that's probably fired up right now as we go to the Gulf South Conference and start our talk with a lead team. A lead team that's now ranked 21st in the country. A lead team that has scored 71 runs in their last four games, including a school record 28 in game two of the series against CBU. And Cam Sudo, a guy who was fired up for the Flames. He sparked everything. Our D2BI National Player of the Week. He went 10 of 21 at the plate, four bombs, drove in 16, scored 13. So he was a big reason why they were able to get up to 71 in the series. And He's now hitting 331 on the season. He was a perfect 5 of 5 in stolen bases. Leads the team with 13 as well. Dylan Stanifer also went 9 of 15, 4 bombs, 7 RBI on the week. And he now possesses an 18-game hit streak as Lee 
dominates their series against Christian Brothers, and they're now 11-4 and four in Gulf South Conference play. Look at the top of the table. You'll find a lead team right now. Montevideo, they're 20-10, and 11-4 also with that mark in Gulf South Conference play. Winners of seven straight after a midweek against Miles and a weekend sweep of Alabama Huntsville all on the road. Ethan Huddleston had six hits and 15 at-bats over the week with a double, a homer, five RBI, hit 356 on the season. The team leader with six bombs. Gino Kazi leads the team with a 278 ERA after his six and two-thirds inning start. Allow one earned. 6Ks for him. And now we're going to talk about an Auburn Montgomery team. 12 and 6 sits at fourth in Gulf South Conference play after a 4 and 0 week. It's tied at the top here in the Gulf South Conference, defeating Alabama Huntsville in a non conference midweek and sweeping Union at home this past weekend. The Warhawks scored 10 plus runs in three of the four games this past week. Jaron Wright. He's the leader of this offense at 377 on the year. He went 8 of 12 with a couple triples and two RBI over the weekend. Delta State, they took two of three against the then ranked number nine team in West Florida. And with a two run walk off home run by Dylan Coleman, that clinched the series win. Coleman had five hits and 12 at bats with a home run and three driven in. On the weekend set, he sports a 389 average in 25 starts, leading the team in that, plus eight home runs and 28 RBI. Logan Eldridge threw a nine inning complete game, two hits, no earned, three Ks in game one of the series, starting it off. On the right foot, he leads the Gulf South Conference with a .95 ERA in 38 innings, and he has not allowed an earned run in six of his seven appearances. Number 25, West Florida. They dropped to 25 again after that one and four week. Cade Manderscheid is now the second player in the conference at 6-0 and as his seven-inning complete game. No earned runs and six strikeouts in his start. He's also second with a 2.03 ERA. West Georgia. They had a tough schedule this week. Played back-to-back midweeks against number one Tampa and number seven St. Leo. They're a 16 and 14 team, nine and six in conference play right now. They dropped both of those games against top two, top ten teams in midweek action. However, they won a road series, two games out of three against West Alabama. Luke Hatcher went four of nine, drove in a couple runs. He leads the team with 28 RBI, north of a thousand in the OPS department. And Jonathan Hickman. Well, he's getting the call out of the bullpen, and he's rising to the occasion quite a bit. Four scoreless with seven Ks on the week out of the pen, and 12 appearances all have been out of the pen for him this year. He leads with a 3-6-9 ERA. Valdosta State played only a midweek game this past week, defeating Eckerd 11-8. Their weekend set against Nova Southeastern was canceled due to weather. And junior Cole Steinmetz has taken advantage of his limited opportunities. He went to a four, a bomb, and three RBI in that game. Steinmetz, well, he's looking to play more. 10 of 16 on the season in 12 games, just four starts for him. Shorter, well, they're 15 and 12, a 7 and 11 in conference play. They hosted Mississippi College at home in Rome and won two games out of three. Their offense scored 30 runs in the three-game set as 14 different players recorded a game with three-plus RBI. Shorter host Clark Atlanta in a midweek before traveling to West Florida this weekend. And that's our breakdown of the Gulf South Conference. Hey, we're excited for that Gulf South Conference. Like like you mentioned, West Florida is a, a big, big, big team there. Monte Valle has won seven in a row. And obviously, we got to talk about Lee, who's also tied up there at first. You know, it's it's a it's a three way fight there. But you also can't forget about an Auburn Montgomery team right. earning their first sweep of the season at twelve and six. So they're they're fighting for that spot, and the Gulf South Conference at the top is going to be looking fun to continue to follow along. But speaking of fun to continue following along. We're going to the Lone Star Conference, and man, there is so much happening there that makes it fun to watch. 
as West Texas A&M, they jumped to number 16 in our rankings. We had head coach Matt Vanderberg on in our issue, so be sure to subscribe to our magazine, d2insider.com slash subscribe to see that interview. They yearned another Lone Star Conference Series win, taking three or four against UT Tyler. And that last game was an offensive shootout with the wind blowing out, you know, wind gusts 40 to 50 miles an hour blown out, 18 to 16. The Buffs are now 21 and 7 in Lone Star play and have yet to lose a series. Dylan Fesperman, we ought to talk about Dylan Fesperman. He recorded two hits in each game of the series and now has an impressive 20 game hit streak on the season, and that's highest in the conference, hitting 420 on the year. Despite the series loss, UT Tyler still sits at fifth in the league and at fifth in the league and has a high flying offense in six games last week, two Monday on the weekend. Lane Hutchinson went 12 of 23. And Nathan Carrier went 15 of 24. And they both went off. They combined for 19 runs scored, six doubles, six home runs. Hutchinson had five of those six and he also had 10 RBI. Hutchinson hit 558 with four home runs, including a U, new UT Tyler D2 record with three in one game in Sunday's series finale. Texas A&M, Kingsville, they've won eight in a row. They've swept back-to-back Lone Star Conference Series. They took four from Oklahoma Christian this weekend, including two one-run wins, which currently puts them that fourth in the standings after that mentioned win streak. Now 6-1 and one in Game 1 in the series. The Javelin is pitchers. One of pitchers to him. Game 2 of the series, 2-1. to one. Sergio Lopez, he went the distance and allowed one earned run with 8 Ks. Lopez has been dialed in as of late with a 2.88 ERA and a .98 whip across 11 appearances. Since being inserted in the rotation, he's been nailed with three complete games in just four starts. Arkansas Fort Smith split at St. Edwards and got great pitching effort from Braden Ross, throwing a complete game shutout with seven strikeouts while just allowing four hits. Davis Druick is on an 11-game hit streak with an 8-for-11 mark in six games last week, two Monday, with five RBI, 11 walks, two doubles, and a home run. Dakota Pierce went 6-10 to with five runs scored for UAFS. And obviously, we got to talk about Angelo State and Lubbock Christian. They split a series this past weekend. Dax Dathy improved to 6-0 after he went 6-2 and two thirds out of the pen with 12 strikeouts and allowed just two earned runs after coming in with one out in the first. That that follower, as, as the Angelo State team likes to use, they're both second and third in the league standings. Carson Ogilvy had nine hits during the four-game set, including three home runs and eight driven in. He's on a 14-game hit streak, hitting 420 on the year, and was named the Lone Star Conference hitter of the week this past week. University of Texas Permian Basin, they won a hard-fought series against Eastern New Mexico, dropping game one, six to five. Then they won three straight to get to 500 on the Lone Star play on the season. Jaden Wilcox tossed a complete game with seven strikeouts and allowed just one earned run in his 6-2 win in game three of the series. Texas A&M International hosted St. Mary's and earned a series split. Joey Coolball went 7-14 for the Dust Devils over the weekend with a double and two triples. He's had just four hits on the season prior to this weekend and only 33 career at-bats with seven career hits in the midst of his third season with the Dust Devils before a big breakout weekend. But breaking it out, that's the breakdown of the Lone Star Conference. A lot to break down. I mean, West Texas A&M continuing to win. Lubbock and Angelo splitting probably what you expected, right? Two, two of the best teams in the league going at it. Um, so we, we've continued to mention it. Hey, we're got to give some credit to West Texas A&M. Got to give some credit. Got to give some credit. Got to give some credit. And like, at the end of the day, the credit's there. I mean, shoot, you look at their ranking 16th of the country, highest team ranked in the Lone Star and the, the highest team in the standings. And at this point in the year, pretty reflective of how good they are. I also think that Lubbock and Angelo are very good capable and dangerous teams as well so that three horse race is going to be fun to continue to detail as we move along and speaking of a race man we're going to move on to the miaa and this is shaping up to be a series where you know you might need to get a new new d2 attendance record at the end of the year when missouri southern and central missouri play for what is shaping up to be i know i'm getting way ahead of myself at this point one of the greatest series we'll see you could it could be it would be number two team in the country versus number three team in the country if the two teams played right now for a duke it out battle for the miaa regular season title now 
That's in the future. Let's talk about what happened this weekend. UCM maintains first place in the league. They had a dominant sweep over Fort Hayes State. They scored nine-plus runs in all four games, played one over the midweek last week. So the offense is cooking. Connor Wolf is also throwing the ball well. Seven shutout innings with eight Ks. He just allowed four hits. He's now 6-0. and on the year after the complete game. And it was a 13-0 win for the Mules. Wolf, 6-0, four complete games, 2-5-7 ERA. He's got a .73 whip on the year. And Jack Kiersman also went five innings with eight Ks, one earned, and a 16-2 win in the series finale. But the Bats, they also did the work too. Max Holy, eight of 13, eight runs scored, two homers, nine RBIs, and a triple. And then also Brandon Van Brugesen, also 7-14, it feels like that's par for the course for him, though. Yes, we talk about the MIAA2, number two Mules, and also number three ranked in D2BI's top 25 pull release weekly, Missouri Southern. And we know this league's all about offense, but we need to talk again about Cole Gaiman. You know, I think we talk about him every week. It sounds familiar, but he shoved again. He, they take two or three against a really good Washburn team. Against a oh, Washburn team that's got bats that can spray it all over the yard. But what does Gaiman do? Eight innings, scoreless. In the series opener, in a combined shutout, it was a three to nothing win. He struck out seven batters, giving up three hits, two walks. And well, for the third consecutive week, you can call him the MIAA pitcher of the week. Henry Kusiak also helped the Lions for three and one this week for their record as they took two or three from Washburn and then also won a midweek game. And Kusiak went off nine of 16 at the plate, three bombs, two doubles over the week. He had eight RBI and six runs scored. He was also the MIAA hitter of the week. Washburn got a good effort from Cal Watkins, nine of 15 last week, five straight multi-hit games for him. Racing his average from 196 to 297 over his six-game hit streak. Garrett Rice also went 4 of 10 last week, but hit three home runs for Missouri Southern. He went 3 of 4 with three bombs. And that 11 to 8 win for Missouri Southern to help them win the ball game in the series in that rubber match, it's a guy like Garrett Rice coming through with three bombs in that rubber match. So, Missouri Southern is able to get the job done and take two of three. They're at second in the league right now. Pittsburgh State, they host nationally ranked Central Oklahoma. They take two of three, including an 18 to four decisive win. In the rubber match, Central Oklahoma dropped to number 20 after the weekend, while Pitt State is still receiving votes, but Man, they're certainly on the cusp of a national ranking with the, how the Gorillas have played. Rogers State, they win a series hosting Northwest Missouri State. Ryan Williams had 10 hits in four games, going 10 of 16 with two plus hits in each game with seven runs scored. Had a double, a couple triples, and four RBI for the Bearcats, who went two and two last week after dropping the series but winning a midweek against GLVC team Rockhurst. Newman takes two of three on the road at Missouri Western. Eli Wool hit six of 11 during the series for Newman. Northeastern State, they take two of three at Emporia and the win for the Hornets and the lone win for them. It came via a complete game from Graham Burner. He went the distance allowed just two hits and had seven Ks facing 23 batters during the excellent outing and a 10 to nothing victory for Emporia State. They got another fantastic start from Kate Barton as well. When you talk about the pitching, despite not getting the series, he went seven innings and allowed one earned, but it was Northeastern State who was able to win 2-1 in 10 innings after Corbin Ford had a go-ahead RBI double on top of the 10th inning to take game one of that series two to one. That's right, Will. And I mean, that's a, that's a big, big series and a lot of big, big teams within the MIAA and, you know, Pitt, Pitt State with that big series when I know there was a, a little bit of a backlash with, with some people thinking that Pitt State should be ranked. They're right there. And if they keep playing the way that they do, they'll find their way in the top 25. And, you know, it, it just gives them more fuel to the fire, as they say. There was backlash? 
I didn't know there was, there was. A little bit, little bit of backlash. You know, there was a mention in the comments saying, hey, you know, why is Pitt State not ranked? But, hey, it gives them more fuel to the fire, and we'll see if they're ranked here in the future. But, hey, we're, we're excited for it. They're a great team. Like, like we mentioned, they're right on the cusp, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of season left to be played. But speaking of season left to be played, we'll transition now to the Mountain East Conference. And we'll give a quick little breakdown of the Mountain East, both north and south in those divisions. As when we talk about Frostburg, they lead the north with a 6-2 and two mark in MC play. Max Proctor went five innings, allowed one earned with 11 cases. He's proved a 3-1 and one on the season. Frostburg, they swept Charleston in their doubleheader and then split at West Virginia State over the weekend. Frostburg kind of getting a little bit of vengeance from that conference tournament title game a year ago. West Liberty swept Davidson Elkins and split with West Virginia Wesleyan. Ryan Talbert had five hits during the weekend, four went for extra base hits. Will Balgo went 8 of 16 as well for West Liberty. James Salvatore went 7 of 18 with a double, two home run, ARBI, four run, and a stolen base. And he was the MEC hitter of the week once again. Notre Dame College is 3 and 5 in MEC play. They split at Concord and got swept by Glenville over the weekend. Caden Gomes had, a, had an 8 of 16 weekend for Notre Dame. Wheeling went 3 and 1 with a split versus West Virginia Wesleyan and was. And with swapping games with Davis and Elkins, Thomas Kagiris went four of eight in the double air split versus West Virginia Wesleyan. Now we go over the South in the MEC, Glenville State. They're five and one conference play. They've won three in a row. They swept Notre Dame College and split with Salem over the weekend, both in double headers. Carlos De Jesus went eight of 12 over the weekend as Glenville has won six of his last eight games. De Jesus had a double and two home runs and four RBI over the weekend. West Virginia State, six and two in conference play after sweeping. Fairmont State, and splitting with Frostburg, Chris Morris and Chase Norris both threw the ball well for West Virginia State. Chase Norris tossed a complete game to one victory over Fairmont State. He matched a career-best eight strikeouts in the win and allowed just four hits and one walk. Andrew Neff threw the ball over the weekend well for Concord, who split over the weekend with Notre Dame and Salem each in doubleheader action. West Virginia Wesleyan split with Wheeling and split with West Liberty over the weekend. Charleston got swept by Frostburg and then swept Fairmont State. And that is the MEC breakdown. It's a good breakdown. And now we'll talk about an NE10 conference. Bentley, a team that won their lone game against American International. By the score of 9-7, to seven, Steve Rizzuto and Joe Cacciatore each had three RBI in that game. Southern New Hampshire, 14-9, 3-1 right now in conference play, sweeping Southern Con State in a doubleheader and splitting a DH with New Haven. Frankie tomorrow, .93 ERA in 29 innings. <laughs> After his eight-inning start without allowing a run, it's six Ks for him as well. He's also hitting three fifty three and 34 at bat on the year. So you talk about some good two-way players, he got one right there. Franklin Pierce, 9-8, and eight, but also 3-1 and one in conference play to start. Splitting a doubleheader against Pace, at pace and then sweeping a doubleheader at Adelphi. Ian Batapaglia, eight hits in 14 at bats. Well, he's hitting 458 to lead the conference. St. Anselm, they split a doubleheader against New Haven to start conference play one and one. Noah Elmore had three hits in the two game set as he leads the team hitting 368. St. Rose had all six of their games postponed. Tough scene right there due to weather. They will resume action on Friday, hosting Southern Con State. But, hey, that's what happens. I mean, if you're watching this right now and you think about all the content we put together on D2BI, you think about a guy like we for up in Winona. You know, you talk about a guy who said, hey, we got snow outside. He's still through a perfect game, so no excuses right now, but postponing right there. Pace went 3-1 and one in conference play this weekend, sweeping St. Michael's in a doubleheader. And then they split a doubleheader with Franklin Pierce, Matthew Rinaldi hitting a team leading 382 on the season. Six game hit streak for him, going seven of 15 with a home run and three RBI over the weekend. And then old Dan Brown, he struck out 10, gave up one on two hits. Now a 174 ERA on the season. New Haven, team that's 500 right now, three and 10 in conference play with a single win over Southern Con State, St. Anselm, and Southern New Hampshire. Liam Carroll, 
Well, he's been pretty good, Robert. 0.79 ERA in 34 innings this season. He struck out 10 over 7 this past week of two-run ball against St. Anne's Love and their victory there. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, it's a tough break. You know, you go through the long troughs of the season and being tr- scheduling six games in a week and not a single one getting played was tough, but St. Rose will bounce back and, and they're excited for it. But, you know, what we're excited for is we're excited to talk about the NSIC conference. And, well, we got quite a bit to talk about there because we obviously have to talk about Augustana. They moved up to number 11. They're 10 and 2 in NSIC play. They swept Minnesota Duluth in a four-game set on Thursday, Friday. Jack Hines went 7-14 with four runs scored, a triple two home run, and five RBI during the season. He's hitting 455 on the year with 10 home runs. Joe Colback went 5-12 with two home runs as well for the Vikings. Winona swept Bemidji, and, well, we got to talk about Peter Tewetti, who pitched a seven-inning perfect game in the opener, highlighting a... 12-0 series opening victory. He was the NSIC pitcher to watch in the preseason poll. He tossed his second ever perfect game in Winona State baseball history. And he was at the D2BI National Pitcher of the Week. So be sure to subscribe to D2Insider.com. So subscribe to see that interview. Wayne State and you marry. Split on Thursday, but then the Friday games were canceled because of overnight freezing rain and ice in Nebraska, and the games will not be made up. Lucas Frares went seven innings with one earn and three hits and two strikeouts and a 6-1 win for them in the first of what happened to just be a two-game series. Minnesota State went two or three against St. Cloud Stakes. One of the games were canceled due to weather but it's the second straight NSIC series win for the Mavericks after a pair of 3-2 wins for them. They're tied. Minnesota State and St. Cloud State are tied for third in the NSIC. Sioux Falls, they win 3-4 against Northern State while allowing only nine runs during the four-game set. Reese Gaber went seven innings, allowed one earn and one hit with just with eight strikeouts and a 3-1 win for Sioux Falls in game one of the series. Jake Ammon went seven shutout innings and didn't allow Erdogan with four hits and four Ks. In their 6-2 win for Sioux Falls, David Swanson also went 7-14 last week for Sioux Falls. Minnesota's Crookston and Concordia St. Paul, they split, or excuse me, Crookston took three of four. Teddy Gaffer helped with eight hits in RB in eight RBI along with a double and two home run during the series. He's hitting 4-0-2. On the season, Danny Wensloff went 7 of 15, and Sawyer Satrum went 8 of 16 during the week for Crookson. But we also want to highlight one of the games they played was an 18 to 13 shootout in which there were 13 total home runs hit in one game, which is the most in a single game so far this season. And not even to mention that Nick Timpson of Concordia St. Paul hit four home runs in that game. So just bombs away, as they say, there in Elkhorn, Nebraska, in a neutral site game. Southwest Minnesota State wins 2-3 against Minot, with one game being canceled. Isaac Nett went 5-10 with a home run for Southwest Minnesota State. That's a good breakdown, Robert, of the NSIC. And now we're going to break down a fun league, a fun league as well. A league that, well, Kirk Neuenheis also described as fun. And, well, we brought him on. This week to talk a little bit about that, but we're going to talk about his team right now. Azusa Pacific, a team that's 15 and 15, 10 and 5 in Pac West play, a team that under Coach Neuenheis has finished second in the regular season standings in each of the past two years. And with their hot streak, that's where they find themselves now, a team that won the first ever Pac West tournament title a season ago. They've swept back to back conference series. And they've now won 10 straight games after being 5-15, and 15, Robert. I think a lot of people were worried, but after going and doing some good things, after their Wednesday to Thursday sweep of Hilo, that Cougar offense with 10 straight games won. They're spraying the ball around the yard with extra base hits during their win streak as the team has a 606 slugging percentage over their last 10 games. Absolutely nuts. That charge has been led by... Mikey Easter, who has hit safely in his last nine games, 7 of 11 and 9 
times he has scored in that series. He's the team leader in average at 393 as well. Cade Marsham had, had nine hits to go along with three bombs as well in the series as this team is starting to play like the team we feel they're capable of playing like. Second in this league right now, and Coach Neuenheis, a guy to talk to, the six-year MLB player, now leader for this Azusa Pacific team. Um, we're looking forward to what he can do in his third year at the helm for this Azusa Pacific squad. And again, after his six-year MLB career, it's fun to see what he's doing leading the charge at the Division II level. Westmont, they were idle this last week. We could talk about a team at top the standings. They will start back up with a Monday-Tuesday four-game set at home against Hawaii at Hilo. They are currently holding an eight-game win streak. Point Loma swept their four-game set Thursday to Friday against Hawaii Pacific, allowing just 11 runs in the series. James Sashin recorded three saves over the weekend, putting his total to a D2 best, 11 saves. He has slammed the door shut at a pretty high level at 270 RA for him in 14 appearances. That's 20 innings. He was named Pac West Pitcher of the Week as well. He's sporting just a .85 ERA or .85 whip on the season as well. Austin Coleman has thrown the ball well. He's 6-0 with a season best 7Ks over six and a third of two-run ball in his win as his ERA dropped to a 3-5-4 over 40 and two-thirds innings on the year. Bryson Hashimoto also recorded six hits over the weekend and extended his hit streak to an impressive 17 games. Fresno Pacific won 3-4 against Concordia Irvine. Trent Maloney was providing a spark atop the lineup going 8-16 of 16 with two doubles and two RBI. He scored five runs as well. Melani is second on the team and hitting at 378 behind Dante Valdez at 382. The Sunbirds got some length as well from their starters over the weekend. Connor Simone went eight innings, four runs, six Ks, eight hits. Jalen Rodriguez went the distance, seven innings. Riley Kreish went six innings and all contributed to save some bullpen arms for the fourth game in which FPU used five pitchers to get the win. So, that's what you have when you look at this conference. Also, you have to talk about the Bible Institute of Los Angeles. Biola took a series at home against Chaminade, winning two of three games. Isaiah Leon races average to 300, above 300, 314 after his 5 for 11 weekend. James Whitman as well hit his ninth and 10th home runs of the season as he leads the conference in that category for Biola. And that is our breakdown of a Pac West League right now. Man, like like we mentioned before in last week's issue, and and talking with head coach Tyler Latore with Westmont, it, it's unfortunate that they don't get to play in postseason play. I would be really excited to see them play, but you know Azusa Pacific at Point Loma, it'll be a two horse race in the postseason with them. You know, deciding who who gets to be at the top there, yeah. since since Westmont does not get to play since that transition West one does not get to play in any postseason play. No, not even conference tournament, not even conference not even tournament. Conference. Okay. So that, that is for NCAA. the next, that two is for years. the next two years. So we will see that, yeah. but now we transition so. to the peach belt conference and well, will you mentioned, you know, a team we haven't really talked about with Kentucky Wesleyan in the G dash Mac. Well, how about a team that we haven't really talked about in the Peach Belt? And that is Augusto, who has yep. tied for first place in the Peach Belt. 19-12 and 12 overall, 9-3 and three in the Peach Belt. Again, tied for first. After a weekend sweep of USC Buford, the highlight was Will Cantrell, who improved to 4-0 and with 3.55 ERA after his nine-inning complete game where he struck out 11. Kyle Lodice had a five-game home run streak during the week that was snapped, but he still has an eight game win hit streak after recording seven hits in the week. The Jags will play Columbus state this weekend, Georgia college, the other team at nine and three tied for first they're 18 and 11. They had a weekend sweep of Flagler. They allowed two runs. That's it. In the entire series, John Luke Glanton threw eight innings of one run ball in game one. 
Bradley Wilson, Owen Thomas, and Lex Kinning each threw three innings to combine for a one-hitter in Game 2. And Jacob Ryan threw a nine-inning complete game with five hits, one run, and five strikeouts in Game 3. Matthew McBain, 360, went three six for 13 in the series and added two home runs, which puts him in the league league with for Dingers with 14 on the year, as he is now nationally the best home run hitter in the country at 14. Flagler, their senior Trey Newland, he had his 19-game hit streak snapped, but he's still hitting 333 on the year, leading the team. Georgia Southwestern, 24 and 7, 8 and 4. They had a perfect week. They moved up, back up to number 19. They went 5 and 0 after sweeping West Florida in a two-game midweek set that they were then ranked number nine, and they swept Claflin on the weekend as well. They scored 83 runs total in those five games, which was led by Brant Dearman, who went an impressive 14 for 22 with 12 RBI. He boosted his average to 441, which leads the conference there. Lander at 20 and nine, that's another team we'd like to talk about, tied for second, eight and four. They earned a home weekend sweep against then ranked North Georgia, who struggled this week going 0 and five. All three games in that series were decided by two runs or less. Gary Garrett raised his average to 314 on the year after going 6 for 12 with two RBI on the weekend. Last thing we want to highlight in the series is Columbus State. They had a 3 and 1 weekend after a 17 run outburst in the midweek game versus West Alabama and the series win at USC Aiken all on the road. Colby Brabson, who's hitting 331, he has a five game hit streak after recording seven hits with a home run and nine RBI on the week. Colton Joyner threw a complete game with four hits and one run and four strikeouts to improve to two and four on the season in game one of the series against USC Aiken. And that's a breakdown of the Peach Belt Conference. Hey, that's always a fun breakdown. But yeah, talk about a team. Talk about a, t- talk about a team, especially with a team in a league that has some teams that we like a lot. That has an RV Lander team that has a ranked Georgia Southwestern team that has a Georgia Calvin team that beat a Georgia Southwestern game. And then you got Augusta. So um, it's a fun league, obviously something that we're going to detail ferociously, really moving forward. Uh, that's going to be fun to see. Let's talk about a league that you have to detail ferociously as we talk about every week, the PSAC. And we'll, we break this down with their two divisions starting in the East. And when we start in the East and really when we start in this league, uh, top of mind and really top of the table right now is East Stroudsburg. They're now number 18 in our national polls. They're now 8-0 in PSAC play as they have won 16 ball games in a row after winning versus Pace and then three games against St. Thomas Aquinas over the weekend. Parker Fry is hot. Robert, he's continuing to rake for this team. Went five of seven during the sweep of St. Thomas Aquinas. He's hitting 413 on the year. And we, I know we talk about the PSAC a lot, and we talk about, man, there's a lot of good arms, good arms, good arms, good arms. And there are some bats. I mean, two of the top five hitters in the country right now in terms of batting average come from the PSAC as well. But speaking of a team with arms, well, it's Millersville. They're ranked fourth in the country after losing a midweek to Wilmington. And then they turned around and took three of four against Cutstown over the weekend. Jeff Savinter, he went five of 11 last week for Millersville, Robert. And this is a guy that I think we need to talk about him too, right? I mean, we talk about a lot of people on this Millersville team. We talk about this group. We talk about everything. They're a top five team. But Jeff Savitzer is a guy that if you let him get on base, you are just automatically allowing him to get a triple. He has 29 stolen bases on 34 attempts this year already. Unbelievable. That's one of the best marks in the nation. And then you talk about another week, another Alex Mycut outing. He tossed a complete game shutout one hitter. Run of the mill performance for him. Seven Ks to improve to 6-0 and on the season. If I'm voting for a national pitcher of the year right now, it's Alex Mycut. He is a 6-0 and through seven starts with a 1.03 ERA and a .82 whip robber. Three complete games, 56 Ks, and 43 and two-thirds innings 
and opponents are just hitting 149 off him. So I know there's other candidates maybe. I mean, there's obviously other candidates, and this is just me saying stuff right now, but – for me, he's my national pitcher of the year right now. Shippensburg and Bloomsburg split over the weekend with the road team sweeping each doubleheader. Bloomsburg did not allow a run at Shippensburg, winning 2-0 and 3-0, and Shippensburg won 1-0 and 5-1 at Bloomsburg. For Bloomsburg, Nate Baranski tossed a complete game shutout two-hitter while only needing 84 pitches to do that. He was fairly efficient. JT Weaver went six and a third with no earned runs and 12 Ks to get the win, while Ethan Miller came in to get the save for Shippensburg in a 1-0 win in game three of the series. Westchester, they sweep Lockhaven. They get back on track after losing a series last week. And for Westchester, well, they've got one of the best hitters in the country. I mean, they've got a guy named Anthony Bocchio. They got a, he's hitting 500 on the year, 29 of 58. This isn't your two for four or four for eight. He has 29 of 58 hitting 500, and Robert, he started the year with a 20-game head streak. So we continue to follow that, and we continue to look at a Westchester team. Mansfield split at Shepard on Friday with the second doubleheader happening at Mansfield on Tuesday. Eric Gustafson, he tossed a complete game, no earned runs, and 15 Ks. He just surrendered three hits. And, uh, well, Eric Gustafson, I mean, he's a guy to talk about. When you look at Mansfield and when you look at what he's done this year, he's leading the country in strikeout-to-walk ratio right now. Eric Gustafson has 44 strikeouts so far this season in 24 and two-thirds. Now we go to the West. We talk about a California team. They won two midweek games against West Liberty, swept Clarion over the weekend to start 4-0 in PSAC play, and it capped off an impressive, 6-0 6-0 week for them as they've won seven games in a row. Santino Mara and Peyton Conti both had great weeks. Mara had 10 hits in six games, and Conti is hitting a nation's best 531 on the season. IUP went 5-0 over the week with wins at Lock Haven, a 9-7 win in 10 innings. And then a four-game sweep against Gannon, including a 4-3 to three win in 14 innings. So IUP doing some work in extra innings to get victories this week. Gannon, it was Carson Wibble who had a strong nine-hit week for them. Ricardo Aponte went 7-18 of 18 with 8 RBI as well last week when you talk about that breakdown. Slippery Rock, they went 3-1 and one over Pitt Johnstown to start strong in PSAC play. And another guy who's doing it on both sides of the ball, Joey Purcell, looking good once again with what he's been able to do here this season. When we look at Purcell, it's a guy who was able to go a two-hit complete game shutout with eight Ks as a part of a six-to-nothing win for the Rock over Pitt Johnstown. He got three hits over the four-game series as well. And he is not allowed to run in his last 12 in two-thirds innings. That's across three appearances. And, of course, we know that they've got Michael Kitko as well, who is only striking out once every 39 at-bats to start this season. That's pretty impressive as well. Seton Hill, they split with rival Mercyhurst. Perhaps a little bit of a letdown for them after how Mercyhurst started the year. But big for Mercyhurst, Seton Hill got a 2-1 to one win in eight innings of game one of the series. Oh, and Mandler went 7-12 of 12 during the series split. He's hitting 339 on the season. So that is a mouthful. That is a lot to talk about the PSAC, a lot of teams to talk about, a lot of players to talk about. Um, but we're going to talk about them as we certainly just did, Robert. Absolutely, Will, and as we transition on now, we're going to go into from the PSEC now to the RMAC Conference, and well, it's the RMAC Conference, and you got to talk about the Colorado Mesa Mavericks. They're now ranked 23. They've won 11 in a row. They sit atop of the RMAC per usual after a slower start to the season. They were 7-8 and eight prior to this win streak, playing around 500. Now they're 18-8. and eight. They swept Colorado Christian and Dame. It scored 63 runs in the four-game series. They averaged 15.75 per game. Five to four trailing. Jordan Ellison came in the game and tossed three scoring scoreless innings. That allowed no runs, no hits at five Ks in a 15 to eight win Monday over Mines. Mesa has scored nine plus runs in each of their games within its 11 game win streak, as they've scored 15 plus seven times during its 11 game win streak. Robert Sherrar was only hitting a buck 76 after nine games, as we detailed before, but the proven RMAC slugger put together an impressive week. And as 
been on a tear since. Now hitting 430 on the year through 25 games. He has 13 hits in five games last week. 13 to 22, 591 with nine runs scored, five doubles, a triple, three home run, 10 RBI with three walks across two stolen bases. As during this 11 game hit streak, Sherrard is hitting 600 during this 11 game win streak. So there's a little bit of correlation between the two. Jonathan Gonzalez also had a 10 hit week in five games for Mesa. Kate Carney went 13 to 20 for Colorado Christian. Sherrard, Gonzalez, and Chris Joe Stefanos combined for 10 home runs for Mesa last week. Regis, they went on the road to their crosstown rival against MSU Denver and took three or four, nearly getting the sweep. They put together a great resume. They split Lubbock the week before, too. They also split with a ranked Augustana team. Huge, huge test for the Shovel Boys as they host Colorado Mesa this weekend. And we're excited for We highlighted it earlier this week on DIVII, as we mentioned some of the guys that really did well for them this past weekend, like Adam, Adam Paniagua, who has 11-game hit streak. Uh, Clayton Kahn, who has a 10-game hit streak. Levi Padilla has a seven-game hit streak. Paniago at 438 with an OPS at nearly 1,500. Khan, who has 17 and 19 in stolen bases, he's at 368. Levi Padilla, 9 of 18 with a seven-game hit streak. He's up to 386 on the year. Adam State, another team we want to highlight. They sweep New Mexico Islands. They've won back-to-back series sweeps, winning eight in a row. Connor Murray went six innings allowed. And Erron with eight Ks and a 96 victory. Matt Bathauer went bonkers. He went a 16 of 24 week with 12 runs scored, four doubles, two home runs, and 13 RBI. He finished the series with a five of five effort versus New Mexico Highlands. Jack Deere, Aiden Tauscher, Mike Bathauer, and Christian Altamirano all hit above 500 last week for Adam State. Mines, they won three of four at Colorado State Pueblo. Tyler Curtis went seven innings allowing one earned and just three hits in the series opener, which was thirteen a 13-4 to four win for Pueblo. However, Mines won for the next three games. Mason Andrews went 8-19 of 19 with nine runs scored and three home runs in the series. So that is a little bit about the RMAC. Some hot teams right now. Mesa looks like Mesa. Adam State is looking great. Regis is saying, don't forget about us. So three teams playing at a really high level right now. And that'll be a fun series, Regis and Mesa. But Mesa, man, uh, they're looking like Colorado Mesa. They weren't looking like Colorado Mesa to start the year, but they're looking like Colorado Mesa right now. And when Colorado Mesa looks like Colorado Mesa, uh, that could be a scary sight for the rest of the RMAC. But Regis playing well, Adam State playing well, winning series they should, and we'll see what happens this weekend. How about let's talk about the sack. Let's talk about this conference, and we'll first start with talking about Catawba, a team that's 22-8, and 11-4 and in SAC play. They continued their success winning a series against Carson Newman and winning a midweek game against then-ranked North Georgia. They also lost a midweek game to a really good Mount Olive team, but Drew Robertson, he continues to hit throughout it all, 10 of 21 with four doubles and two RBI, improving his hit streak to 12 games. Over the weekend, Robertson is hitting 416 on the season. Wingate, 11 4 and 4 team as well, just like Catawba in conference play. They've won five in a row after a midweek drubbing Francis Marion. And at home, weekend sweep against Mars Hill. The Bulldogs scored 46 runs and allowed just seven on the week. So they dominated their opponents. Brett Adams recorded a hit and RBI in five straight games as he went seven of 13 with two home runs and eight RBI this past week. He's now hitting 407 on the season. He's driven in 36. Keelan Hoover, five and one, seven innings, six hits, one run, no walk, six Ks. And Josh Dotson, who's four and two, seven innings, five hits, no runs, one walk, six Ks. Well, they threw the ball effectively and well for Wingate in their respective starts. Tusculum, they moved to third place in SAC action. They're 12 and six. So you got Catawba and Wingate at both 11 and four, and now a Tusculum team at 12 and six. They got a big road series against Lincoln Memorial 
Murphy Flood had a productive weekend going a 7 of 14 with a home run and seven RBIs. And then Flood, he leads the team with 27 driven in. So did Ben Skartz, who went 10 of 20 on the week, hitting 500 with four extra base hits and four RBI. He's hitting an impressive 440 on the season with a nine game hit streak. Brady Salyards also, he, he threw seven shutout with five Ks in his win, and now Sal Yards is 3-1 and one on the season. Carson Bowles for Lincoln Memorial, well, he continues to stay hot, and uh, he's just at the unbelievable pace what he's doing right now. He recorded two three-hit games over the weekend. He's hitting 472. That's the best in the conference by, well, what we would consider to be a country mile. Coker, 18-12, and 12, and they're 9-6 and six in conference play after winning a series on the road at Ohio Dominican as they stepped outside of conference play. Benjamin Blackwell might be the conference freshman pitcher of the year. He went six and a third across two appearances on the weekend, allowed just one hit, no run, struck out three to get a win and a save as he was very instrumental in both decisions there. Blackwell is 5-0 and oh with a .96 ERA, plus he has three saves. So five wins, three saves. You've affected eight games with your arm coming out of the pen as a freshman in 37 and a third and 12 appearances. He's been great for this Coker team. Newberry, nine and six. They've won eight straight games. Games after a midweek win against Augusta and a weekend sweep against UVA Wise, they take care of business. Donovan Ford leading this team, hitting 395. He went 7 of 14 with three RBI, two stolen bases this past week. Ford has a double digit hit streak, 11 games, like his teammate Cade Faircloth, who has a 10 game hit streak after recording five hits over the weekend. Hunter French threw seven shutout in his start to go 3-2 and two with a team leading 338 ERA. So Newberry heating up. Lenore Ryan had a perfect week as well after beating UVA Wise in a non-conference midweek and then sweeping Emory and Henry at home. Tyler McPeak hitting 363, wins 6 of 11 this week with four extra base hits and seven RBIs. He's tied for the team lead in extra bases with 17 and first in RBI with 30, 90, a 17 extra base hits. Pretty impressive for him on the season. Anderson, one game above 500 overall. They're 7 and 11 in conference play. They picked up a surprising road sweep of Limestone and a home midweek win against Southern Wesley. And Carlos Hernandez was the key cog this weekend on the offense, going 8 of 16, extending his hit streak to seven games like his teammate Zach Stover, who also extended his streak to seven games as well. Hernandez and Stover hitting 378 and 354, respectively, are the top two hitters on the team. Man, that's that's a lot to cover with the SIAC and we're or excuse me, the SAC, and we're excited for it. Um, can't wait for it. But now we're gonna cover the SIAC as we get down into the, the final conferences and well, in the SIAC, we got to talk about Albany State. They have been clicking on all cylinders, winners of 10 straight ball games. Yes, you heard that right, 10 straight ball games. Really excited to see how, how this team continues to perform as the season goes along. But Jonathan Logson had five hits in nine at-bats over the weekend with four driven, and he's up to 441 on the year and has reached base safely in 10 straight games, 441 is an impressive figure. Brady Davis threw a seven-inning complete game with seven strikeouts in his start to the series, dropping his ERA to 344 in 34 innings. The Golden Rams have a big midweek game against a ranked Georgia Southwestern team before ending their road stretch at Clark Atlanta. Spring Hill swept their weekend opponent against Clark Atlanta, winning all three games by two runs or less. Ethan Valdez went 5-9 for nine with 7 RBI and 6 walks in the series with a walk-off hit. He leads the team in hitting at 338. Bryce Anderson is a perfect 18-for-18 18 18 on stolen bases for the Badgers this season. Savannah State, they're 18-6, and 13-5 and in SIAC play. They won a series at Lane College. Jose Santiago improved to 5-1 and one with a conference best 191 ERA after going 7 shutout in the start with 5 strikeouts. Hunter Bradshaw stole three bases on the weekend, and he's a perfect 24 for 24 in stolen base attempts. Chandler Hicks has hit safely in 13 of his last 14 games. He's up to 30, 438 on the year, second behind Jaden Odin, who's at 440 on the team, which is second in conference again behind that aforementioned Jonathan Logson. Miles, they lost in midweek contest to Monte Vallo before sweeping 
Benedict at home. Nick Copen has been the guy on both sides of the ball for miles. Leading the team with a 387 batting average and leading the team with a 391 ERA in 46 innings. Copen threw five innings of two-run ball with five strikeouts in his start over the weekend and had a two-run home run in the series. Edward Waters, they're 11 and 6 in Syac play 12, 16 and 12 overall. They took two or three against Lemoyne Owen, in which Lemoyne Owen, they won their first game of the year and their first since 2022. So Lemoyne Owen looking to improve upon that as well. Kentucky State, they're 11 and 17, 6 and 11 overall. They went two and two on the week, dropping a midweek game to Oakland City before taking two or three against Morehouse College. Head coach Rob Henry, he won his 200th game at the helm during the series against Morehouse. Joseph Esparza returned the lineup after missing over a month due to injury. He hit 432 last season. Kelton Saylor leads the team in hitting at 422 with his 10 for 16 week with a nine game hit streak. He also recorded three stolen bases to lead his team with 14. There we go. That's a good breakdown. And now we'll break down the Sunshine State Conference. Robert, number one, Tampa, a team to talk about. They're 26 and 2, 8 and 1 in conference play. They went 4 and 0 this week after averaging 11 runs per game during the week. And the Spartans, they were able to defeat West Georgia in a game before sweeping the battle of I-4 series against rival Florida Southern on the weekend. Senior EJ Combo returned to the lineup this weekend after missing 6 games and well, he made his return and presence in the lineup known for sure. 8 of 15, 3 bombs, 11 RBI, now up to 409 on the season. And the Sunshine State Conference recognized him as well as the conference's player of the week. Anthony Nunez is up to a modest six-game hit streak after recording six hits this past week. And Skyler Gonzalez. Man, I was on the high horse about Alex Mycut. This would probably be the... Definitely the biggest contender when we talk about National Pitcher of the Year honors, and he continues to win. Skyler Gonzalez, a good six-inning start for him. He boasts a D2 tying best 8-0 record with a 1-4-7 ERA on the season for the number one ranked team in America, Tampa. Florida Southern, again, a one and three week for them with the aforementioned defeat of Tampa, but won a non-conference midweek matchup against Florida Tech. Casey O'Dell has been strong out of the Mox pen as he went four innings across two appearances this past week. He's got a 2-1-9 ERA, a .97 whip in 24 and two-thirds innings this season. And O'Dell has allowed just one earned run in his last 13 and two-thirds as well this season year across five appearances. St. Leo 24 and 4, 9 and 3 as well in conference play. Beat West Georgia in a midweek game and took a series against Emory Riddle. Luke Lashuka, he's 8 and 0 on the year, tying a D2 best record as well, striking out 9 in 5 shutout innings in his start over the weekend and he was the Sunshine State Conference pitcher of the week as well. Lashuka regained the conference ERA lead at 146, and it feels like Lashuka and Gonzalez are battling it out for Sunshine State Conference Pitcher of the Year, at least how we look at it right now. So Lashuka doing that. Buck Anderson had six hits over the week, including a walk-off sacrifice fly to give the Lions the series win. He's now on a 13-game hit streak. He's hitting 327. On the year against St. Leo, 24 and 4, and they've been staying inside our top 10, ranked number 8th in the rankings right now. Embry Riddle as well, a double play duo of Camden Trafficante and Chase Bruno. And they each had six RBI over the weekend. Both players are just shy of 400 at 398 and 394, respectively, on the season. Embry Riddle, 15 and 10, 4 and 5 in conference play. Nova Southeastern had their weekend series canceled against Valdosta. You know, Valdosta and Nova just want to play, but that gets rained out, that stuff. Rollins won a series against Florida Tech. They're receiving votes by us for a second consecutive week. Ryan Fury was 
Throwing the ball well, he's allowed two or fewer earned runs in his last six appearances. He threw five innings with five hits, two runs, three walks, six Ks. He's now 5-0 and on the season. Lynn took a series against its weekend foe Barry at home. Junior Christian Otero took advantage of his opportunities. Going 5 of 12, two bombs, five RBI. Prior to the series, he just had 26 at-bats on the year. Palm Beach Atlantic earned a road sweep against Eckerd. Nate Housen had five hits over the weekend, including a couple of bombs. He had four runs driven in as well. So that's a breakdown of the Sunshine State Conference, Tampa and St. Leo. They each are some of the best teams in the country, teams in the conference, and, of course, two of the best arms fronting both of those staffs. But, again, a Rollins team we're looking at. We know they've done damage in the postseason the last few years, and it always a very top-to-bottom, very competitive, fun league to watch. And, I mean, I wouldn't count out a, a team like Embry-Riddle either. You know, they've had to play Tampa and St. Leo the last two weeks, so take that into account as well. It's a great conference, and it's it's the final conference that we're going to cover as now we go to the – non-conference three-team independence, but we have a lot to talk about there. And speaking of a lot to talk about there, how about a Bluefield State team, Will? How about a team that's won nine in a row after a midweek win against King and a weekend sweep of Virginia State? And, I mean, they've just been impressive. Braden Major threw a three-hit complete game shutout in the Virginia State series. Chris Larkin is leading the team with a 506 batting average. Just impressive all around with this Bluefield State team now sitting at 14 and 8 on or excuse me 15 and 8 on the season. Salem they're 17 and 8. They went 2 and 2 this week. They split double airs against Glenfield State. Uh Concord Jose Loho recorded 5 hits and 5 runs from the leadoff spot for the Tigers. Loho's hitting 415 on the year and Virginia state, they were swept on the weekend again against Bluefield state, but they did win the mid win week game against Virginia Peninsula community college. TJ McGowan went three for three in that game. And that will wrap up all of our conference breakdowns and previews. It certainly will. There was a fun, a lot of fun to talk about. Again, if you want the most comprehensive, most detailed coverage of Division II baseball, just go to Twitter and type in at D-I-V-I-I baseball and then just hit that follow button. And, and what you also might want to do, I've had a lot of fans tell me they do this as well, Robert. You hit that notification button as well. So every time we make a post, you'll have something on your phone, any pertinent updating, breaking news about Division II baseball or content updates, rankings, drops. You're going to be the first to know if you subscribe in terms of the notifications, which is obviously completely free as X is a great great platform for us to continue to spread the word on Division II baseball. And then also, if you do want to take that a step further, we have that premium subscription-based service, which is our D2 Baseball Insider magazine as well that features a lot of interviews and things that we don't put on social media. Absolutely. Well, we're excited for it. And yes, please subscribe to that magazine. Follow D-I-V-I-I Baseball on Twitter. If you're seeing this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Follow us on Instagram as well, D-I-V-I-I Baseball. But that will wrap up this week. Stay tuned as we're going to post a little bit early with the holiday weekend coming up. We're going to post a little bit early on the series to watch since many of them will be starting on Thursday this week instead of Friday due to the holiday weekend of Easter. So be looking forward to that as we break down some of the series. We kind of mentioned some here this in this uh, breakdown, but we'll definitely mention more of it as we talk about it when we get that posted out. So thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.